Have you heard of Vox Royalty Company? I have. I was actually on a conference call with them um, recently, but go ahead. Yeah. So I met them out in Beaver Creek uh, with John a um, couple of years ago and just love the management team. I think they're super smart, super energized, but they're very disciplined with how they do yeah. deals. Um, and they're young, which I think that's where their energy comes from. If that's Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's important. To me. I've been in and out of them since, I don't know, maybe they were under a dollar. I can't remember how it was maybe under 50 cents. Like we, John found them really early on and we've had a lot of successful. Kevin, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we have a similar friend, John Finnick, and you've done some work for him. Is that correct? Yep. A couple of years ago. Um, I, that's actually how I came across the site. Um, I heard John on a financial podcast and uh, we started trading emails and then it turned into phone calls and texts and uh, I helped him a little bit uh, with Fennec Consulting back when he was starting out. Um, and he's the one who actually introduced me to the site. Okay. What was the site? Uh, it's stockta.com. Got it. And tell me a little bit about the background and uh, what got you involved in that? Yeah. Um, I've been trading stocks ever since middle school. Uh, my grandmother was super into it. I've always found it very interesting. Um, traded, you know, throughout college, helped pay for college, pay off my school loans. Uh, had a couple of financial licenses. I let them lapse. Um, but me just too. always, um, always traded kind of on the side, um, as a hobby and extra income and, uh, you know, got introduced to John and started helping him a little bit and started learning more about his process. And I'm a technical analysis guy. I asked him like, Hey, what's, what's your go-to? And he showed me the site and, uh, site was founded back in 1999. So I'm, I'm definitely not the original owner. Uh, the original owner spent a ton of time coding it. There's 161 million lines of code. Uh, we cover something crazy, like 192,000 different stocks all over the world, uh, different exchanges. We have 25,000 users all over the world. Uh, it's totally free and we're, uh, looking to, to grow our user base. Um, uh, and I got to know the owner. I tried to buy it from him a couple of years ago. Um, he wasn't ready to sell. And then, uh, actually I had hip surgery in January. I was on bed rest for a month and I was bored and, uh, reached back out to him and he had shut the site down. Uh, I didn't have time, had some server issues. And, uh, I found some tech guys, uh, Tristan and Wade who have done enormous legwork to help me, uh, reformat the site. Uh, we went back through with some more modern day AI and reformatted, recoded, redid the layout, um, and back tested and everything came out really well. And, uh, we relaunched, um, about a month ago, uh, so far so good. And, you know, I've been using the site now for five years and it's really helped, uh, my own trading and my own trading got worse when it went down. So I'm like, I got to figure out a way to buy this <laughs> and get it back up. Cause it's, I can't, I can't trade without it now. Yeah. I want to dive a little bit into that just briefly. Um, before we get into the charts, tell me, you told me a story offline about how um, you were, you shut things down a month ago, except for you were making trades through your site and you made a bunch of money off of that. Just, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but tell me, tell me about that story. Yeah. Uh, so we had a baby boy back in May and congratulations. Uh, thank you. And, uh, my wife and I, you know, took some time off from work and, um, we were from the Northeast. So we traveled back up to the Northeast for, uh, for all of June and part of July. And we were just kind of hanging out and I was like, hey, I'll take a break from trade. I won't bring my laptop, you know, but good luck on that. Yeah. Found some opportunities, you know, couldn't totally get away from it. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try trading the site and nothing else. And, um, actually I'm looking at my stats now. So I won 82% of my trades. My worst loss was uh minus 0 0.64. My biggest gain was 31%. And, um, you know, obviously a little different market in July. There was some tailwinds. So definitely some luck involved, but, uh, the site really helped me, you know, find the right entry points and stay patient. And then, you know, teach not 
I'd say more helped, you know, I've been doing it for a while, but it helps me visualize where to put my stops. Um, you know, it's just straight math. There's no narrative. So it's just an algorithm that I think does a really good job of cutting through the noise. And, you know, I think humans do a terrible job, you know, competing against algorithms. And that's what a lot of the trading is now. <clears throat> so I think, you know, the average guy's at a real big disadvantage um, trading against these bigger funds, these bigger institutions that have a lot of technology behind them. And that's kind of why I tried to bring this back and why I'm trying to grow the user base. Cause I think the average uh, trader would really benefit from using this. Excellent. Let's uh, look at some, uh, my listeners are going to be interested in natural resource stocks. So let's pull up some charts, what you like. And uh, as we pull up those charts, as you pull them up, let's talk about your methodology and uh, what you're looking for. Yeah. Can you see my screen? I sure can. Okay. Um, so part of how I trade, um, just my overall kind of macro is, uh, I look a lot at what the, the Dixie's doing, uh, the DXY. I look a lot at what the VIX is doing, what the move index is doing. And then really simple way I found this year is, uh, what oil's doing. Um, so oil for the most part has been range bound from 65, 70 up to 90. Uh, right. the, way the, the way the Permian operates, they can't make money under 65. Uh, the U.S. government's already tipped their hand saying they're they're refilling the SPR at 70. So I don't know if I would do that trade right now, but in the past, I've looked at it when oil's been in that 65, 70 range, I've bought some energy and gone long with that. But then I've also gone long, um, you know, tech and other growth plays when oil's low. And then when oil's got up around that 90 mark, it seemed to kind of be a headwind for the market. So then I've sold, you know, some of the growth plays. And that's what I've rotated into miners a little bit. Um, I really like the royalty place. Uh, so do I. I just think their business model is tough to beat. I mean, their their GNA is so low. Their overhead is so low. I mean, there's some really good producer companies out there, but all their ASICs have been getting squeezed uh, with just yeah. inflation. And, you know, the royalty companies feel a little bit, but their margins are still so high. They're, yeah to absorb those costs so i mean i'm i'm long wpm which is wheat and precious precious metals right now yeah uh, so we have a track bullish overall trend short term it might consolidate is what neutral means um yeah. but these numbers on the left so this is resistance so a 60 62.20 so this is confluence um and what we measure map uh, we use a bunch of different indicators and yeah without giving away our secret sauce, it kind of spits it into the machine and it comes out with price points and numbers. So a call flits or two is really low. So okay. it would have a chance to break out. Um, and if it pulled back, it has a really, you know, decent size support of uh, a confluence of 10, which we would classify as a medium at 58.31. It has more support at 56.46. So this pull back, you know, say something crazy happens with the market, it would, you know, you know, you never know. You have a limit down day, something crazy happens. None of the sure. technical analysis is going to work, but within a normal price move, I think this would have a really hard time breaking below 56 in the short term. So yeah, I have some questions about all of this. Keep yeah. to me confluence. What is that? Uh, confluence is just where things meet. So we measure and map, um, all these different analysis here so we do ema mac drsi yeah a bunch of different things and the machine basically does all the calculations for us and it spits out like how many things intersect at that price point so the more things intersect you know the stronger the confluence which would be stronger support or resistance got it and i've seen numbers as high as 50 um i can't think of off the top of my head but so the higher the confluence, the stronger the signal is basically how our algorithm works. Got it. And uh, and again, some of these questions I know and some of them I don't know, um, but I just wanted to be for all of our listeners out there. So uh, Wheaton showing a confluence of two. So that's very low. So you don't like this stock right here going long, correct? 
No, no, I do like it. So the resistance confluence of two is very low. So that okay. has a good chance to break through that. And then I if it breaks see. out, there's no immediate term resistance. Now this, we, we measure and map all the data throughout the day. When the market closes, we wait, let the dust settle. We pull the data at five. It calculates for about 20 minutes, depending on how much volatility. And then it runs the 161 million lines of code and it spits out these numbers around 530. Okay, time out, time out. When I talked to you yesterday over the phone, you said, Andy, let's do it late at night. <laughs> this yes. is why. So yep. to all of our viewers, it's eight o'clock at night, uh, Wednesday night on what's today, the 21st, August 21st. And that's why Kevin would not meet with me during the day. He's like, can we do it at night? Because <laughs> you were, you were, you were, uh, I guess, getting all this data, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, we measured the whole, every price movement throughout the day, but we're big, like the open and the close are the main, like our sure. biggest you know, most important data inputs, uh, but we measure any movement throughout the day. Like every good trader. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. And, and what we found was we actually were looking to do this inner day and have it like constantly update. But what we found is that a lot of the price move, not a lot, but there's a decent amount of price movement during the day that can be fake outs and other algorithms that we could potentially be trading against. They're really good like this at knowing where stops are. So they will run people's stops, get them out of a stock and then run it up. So if you've seen, like I call the first half hour of the trading day, kind of the, the kitty pool, cause there can be crazy price movement in the first half hour, things get manipulated. And then next thing you know, the afternoon, you know, they can manipulate a stock down in the morning. And next thing you know, in the afternoon, it's off and running and you got stopped out at 10 o'clock. Yes, yeah, that happens a lot actually. Yeah. Yeah. So. We were kind of mindful of that when we we're redoing this and we're like, you know what, like we're better off keeping it with the, you know, how we had it set up before, um, and just trying to make sure that, you know, we can try to give a true value as possible to all the different price points. Got it. Okay. So this is showing a confluence of two at 6220. So that means it's a very low resistance, medium, yes. very high likelihood that that's going to break. And just for all the listeners, this is not a recommendation, but this is a Wheaton. Is that what we're looking at? Yep. Yep. This is WPM. WPM is Wheaton Precious Metals. That is the ticker or the ticker is WPM. Yep. So great. Cool. So this is a, uh, this would be a trade that you would look to. And this is just, again, this is uh, all the data came out today on August 21st. This would be something that you'd be interested in trading. Yeah, I already own some. I actually bought some in the mid fifties when I saw the support levels. Um, mm -hmm. And the data was a little different back then. I believe I got in around 54, 55 and the support was a 15 for the confluence. Uh, okay. So is that a high number? Um, yeah, that's getting up there. Um, but again, it's all, it's all kind of relative. I mean, for bigger stocks, you know, that's not a, as huge a number. Um, some of the micro caps, you can see like, you know, some higher numbers, but to go from a penny to, to four cents is a huge move, you know, right. Percentage wise. Got it. Okay, great. Shoot. Let's uh, look at another company, another chart. Yeah. So, um, I like, uh, Osisco gold royalties a lot too. Uh, so I. I own them. Um, I've been in and out of them for years. Um, so bullish trend overall. Um, I bought into this, um, right around here. Uh, so you know, 18.2 confluence of four, that's still pretty low. Um, you know, still a good chance of breaking through that. And then just 18.55 confluence of one, that's not very strong resistance. But then you yeah. look at, you know, 17.2, 14s, you know, medium to high, 16.73 is a medium uh, a 10. So, and then you look down below, you got another 16 with an E. So, I mean, I know 18 to 16 is still a big, price difference, but it has some pretty strong support. And what I like to see is I like to see confluences with some bigger numbers as it goes up, because the smaller these numbers are, as it goes up, the more the charts get stretched and the more overbought it is. Got it. Okay. Got so it. if you see a stock and it's got twos all the way down the side and there's no higher number, like that's ripe for a pullback. And I have friends who trade, I, I, I know people who work in finance full-time who've used this and they're like, they love seeing charts that 
have twos up the sides because they're just waiting for that reversal and then they short it and ride it back we down. Short the heck out of it. Well, excellent. This is a great tool, man. It's super I'm helpful. Amazed. Yeah, I'm already falling in love. Um, I mean, like I said, I've been using it for five years and if it didn't work, I want to put my own money into it. Like I'm funding the site now to keep it running uh, through my training. Um, and I mean, I have a three month old at home and I have a lot of things going on that I could be doing besides putting time into this. And sure. it, it's definitely, in my opinion, worth it. Sure. Let me, let's look at another chart. What else do you got for us? Yeah. Um, have you heard of Vox Royalty Company? I have. I was actually on a conference call with them um, recently, but go ahead. Yeah. So I met them out in Beaver Creek uh, with John um, a couple of years ago and just love the management team. I think they're super smart. Super energized, but they're very disciplined with how they do yeah. deals. Uh, and they're young, which I think that's where their energy comes from. If that's yeah, I mean, I mean that's important. I've been in and out of them since I don't know, maybe they were under a dollar. I can't remember how it was, maybe under fifty cents. Like we, John found them really early on, and we've had a lot of success with them. I don't, I don't own any now, but um, it's. I think it's a really well-run company. Um, I was looking at this last night. Let me find my notes. Um, so yesterday, the stock closed at 273, and the only major resistance was 273, and I believe it was a confluence of 15. And if you look where it closed today, 268. So it failed at resistance, and now um, you got a 272 for a confluence 13 resistance. So it's still... Um, I mean, it could break through tomorrow, but I think it would need some help. And yeah. there's no support till 255, at least today. Now, tomorrow, it could find a bottom, you know, and they'll recalculate and it'll come up with a different. But I mean, seven's still a pretty good number. So this might be range bound for a little bit, but I think they have a great business model, you know, longer term. Yeah. And for our listeners, I love a stock like this because... You can play it several different ways. You said if it's range bound, you can trade it in and out between the ranges. Yep. I, I have done that, not specifically to this stock, but I've done it to many other stocks uh, all the time. That's number one. Number two is let's say if you do love the stock, and I, I'm a big fan. Um, again, not advice, but I'm a big fan. And let's say something happens and you're just wrong and take off your trading hat, put on your investor hat. This would be a stock that I'd want to hold. Again, you don't want to do that if you're trading because then you're going to be holding a lot of stock. Yeah, but 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 I what what I am saying is like a stock like this, I would have no problem just holding for the long term. So, yeah, and royalty and, plays are usually safer. I mean, very safe. Yep, I I think the biggest risk for them is somebody buying them out, and I don't think they would give away the company cheap. But I think you know, yeah, no, that's they, a great punch. I think their research is good. I think what they've done is so well, uh, you know. They've executed really well. They have some developmental projects that have a lot of upside. So, I mean, I think, you know, one of the major royalty companies, you know, if they were smart, they would have scooped them up a long time ago. Yeah. In fact, that's, that's a great point. Probably the biggest, I see the biggest downside to royalty companies is that I don't want to say you have a limited upside, but your upside is um, because they're safer and because like a company like this will more than likely be bought out you certainly could get a 10 bagger or 20 bagger but it's just not going to be typical if you would with the royalty company in my well, mind you're, you're probably looking more at 5x which is still great which I is mean, great money yeah <laughs> exactly so I, I think part of this like part of why i'm doing this is i'm so sick of seeing on social media just like, like the yolo options just people just i think their relationship and how they view wealth is just so unhealthy and you know, they're trying to hit home runs and they're yeah. striking out a lot and they're blowing up their accounts and you see people like ruining their life savings and they're, they're, they don't have a process. They're uninformed and they're competing against an algorithm from a bigger fund that it's a rigged game. And, yeah. you know, I've been doing this for a while and, you know, it'd be great if I could, you know, hit home runs every day, but I'm just, I'm looking to hit singles and doubles. And the way I look at it is, you know, not how much I can make, it's how much I can lose. And if I can just consistently hit singles and doubles, I, I looked up last night, I made some trades today, but my, my, uh, I won 72% of my trades so far this year. Yeah, it's phenomenal. 
So, you know, the way I look at it is if I can keep getting wins, my account will keep growing. And then my bets, even though, if, you know, if I spread my risk out, my bets get bigger and I can keep spinning that roulette wheel and I stay in the game. Yeah. People keep blowing up their accounts. Like it's really hard to start from zero and build back up. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, I've done, I've made those mistakes. <laughs> All right. What else do you got? Uh, so I figured I'd show GDX. I mean, I miss this. This is definitely broken out. I mean, there's no resistance right now. Yeah. There's some support, medium level support at 37, support at 36, heavier support at 30, almost 35. So, I mean, it's off and running. The RSI is at 67, so it's not too overbought, but, you know, I use this to try to, try not to chase stuff. Like I try to get in stock before, you know, in this. Term of this. Yep. And there's plenty uh, of stocks too, but this is a good indicator. I think where the overall market's going or it could be yep. a good indicator, but then you just find out what happens. Again, this is for listeners is you get a big breakout and let's say a bellwether on this, and we'll say that's GDX on this. And then you really do some research and like what other, where's the money going to flow to next, yep. right? So that's really what you'd be doing. But yeah, go ahead. Carry on. I mean, I, I like trading ETFs. Uh, so do I. I, th I think it diversifies your risk. But if I find, you know, I'll run screens and, and stuff through here. But if I find an ETF that looks like it's about to break out, one of my kind of favorite things to do is then I figure out what are the top holdings within that ETF. And then if I really want to double down, so... Us. If GDX, the largest holding, you know, it's probably new, new one, you Barrick. know, Barrick, Ag Agnico Ego. Um, yeah. If I really like those, then I pull up those charts and I see what they're doing. And for the yeah. most part, they're usually following the price action in GDX. So if I want to cherry pick like some of the better run companies through an ETF, then I load up on those too. Yep. Yep. Got it. That's a great strategy. All right. What else you got? Uh, uh, AEM figured I'd show that. That's, yeah, I mean, it, same, it, yeah, it, 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 same, thing as, um, same thing as GDX already broke out, starting to get a little stretch. Like you see, I was going to say, it was starting to look stretched there, right? Yep. And, and that's why we left the charts like this. Like we could have updated them, but I think it does a really good job visualizing like that, that solid green bar through that yep. would be this 10 support right here. Um, so I just, I think it's very, it can look busy, but I think it's very simple to understand like, oh, that that's a little stretched. The RSI is over 72. Like maybe I don't chase this here. Yeah. And this is one of my all time favorite companies. I mean, the first mining stock I ever bought was Kirkland Lake and I got into it before it was Kirkland Lake and that like went ballistic on me. I didn't know anything about the mining sector. I ran a screen, looked at their earnings. And I'm like, holy smokes, this thing's a cash cow. And then next thing I know it's. You know, I got in a short money and next thing you know, it's 30, 40 bucks and Ed Nico Eagle buys it. And I've been kind yeah. of sucked into this sector ever since. That's awesome. Excellent. All right. Any other, uh, any other charts? Eric? Uh, if you want to look at some oil stuff. Uh, yeah. Let's look at some energy. Energy. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of Viper. Right and never heard of Viper. Nope. I'm not. No, I did really well with them coming out of COVID. Um, I'd never I heard it. I found yeah. out. Um, they're, they're a royalty play. Um, they own some land. They own some lease rights. Um, and when oil's doing well, I mean, if you look at this chart, like it has a lot of torque um, to oil. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this was like in the tens before COVID, maybe 15, 20, like it, it ripped. Like it was, I didn't know anything about them, never heard of them. And somehow stumbled on them and that was one of my best stocks and it was either 2020 or 2021 like it was yeah so i really like them i mean i don't love the energy setup right now but you know if it were to pull back to the 39 level 40 level 38 like depending on the greater you know macro conditions and what's going on in the middle east like that could be a good point to maybe jump back in and get ready for the next leg up yeah got it uh, um Pull up copper, just, just to yep. figure, you know, figure go over it. Not a great looking chart right now, neutral setup. But what's really interesting is closed at 43.5, heavy support at 43.09. Wow, look at that. So, 
who knows where this goes. I mean, if it starts to break to the upside, it has very little resistance. Like these are small numbers. It could break right. through a couple of these in a day, maybe two. But yeah. if it breaks this. I don't know if I would touch anything copper related in the short term. Yeah. Well, it might be worth the nibble though, around 43 and 43, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one strategy. I mean, I've done that before. Like if I like something and it pulls back to a big support level and mm -hmm. I know like I'll watch it and like, Hey, that held then. Yeah. That could be a good point to go long. Um, but with how China is right now, and, yeah. you know, people whisper in recession on CNBC, you know, every other segment, you know, I back think, for copper scary. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are a little, you know, a little scared of copper right now. Yeah. I agree. Um, and then I pulled up URA. Uh, Hold on that, about that, about copper. You don't yeah. have to pick a bot. So that's the thing is you can, again, we, I said I'd nibble potentially, but I probably wouldn't just because of everything we just talked about. And yeah. I, in fact, I don't want to say I probably, I won't nibble. Um, I need other things before I start nibbling. That being said, I just have to remind myself, you want to get the sweet spot somewhat in the middle, if you would. I mean, or get the breakout. You don't have to be early. I've been early way too many times. And when I'm early, I'm usually early. <laughs> I'm wrong. Yeah. So. I mean, this site was great for me. And this is totally, I don't know if your listeners do a lot of crypto, but um, I was looking at my stats earlier. And I mean, this site helped me time um, getting into crypto. And I mean, a third of my crypto gains are over 45% this year. And I got nice. in, I got in in late February, um, sold in March. Got back in in April, rode it up through the middle of July. And, you know, you never catch the exact top or bottoms, but yeah. I mean, looking at my stats, I had a 68% win percentage with anything crypto related. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, again, it's it's about finding the right entries and being smart with your stops or how you use your trailing stops. Um, and just, you know, I'm not a big fan of options. I don't, I don't love using leverage. Like I, I really try to keep things simple and, you know, I'm happy if I can make five, eight, ten percent on a trade, and then I roll that into the next thing, and yeah. you know, I just keep trying to, you know, grind, grind higher um, over yeah. the years. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you got uranium here. Yeah, really not great looking chart, bearish across yeah. the board. Um, it's trying to base at twenty five. So if you see twenty five point five as a four, twenty five point oh six as a two. So it's trying to base, but. I mean, there's a lot of resistance on that side and uranium kind of scares me because I feel like that's a big narrative trade. Like people will pump it and say, oh, you know, China's building all these reactors in the next five years or there's a huge uranium supply shortage and it'll run like crazy and then the bottom will drop out. Like, yeah. it's, I think it's very tough to trade. I've, I've done it over the years, but I think I'm really picky about when I do trade it and I wouldn't. Personally, I, I'm not touching it right now. Yeah, you know, my experience been right here with uranium is you buy it when it's hated, number one. And then number two, even when it's hated, that's a long-term trade. <laughs> you yes. might be sitting on that for a year or two, at least. Yep. So so I think it's very important in the uranium company uh, to buy. I only stick with the best uranium companies that I consider the best, if you would. Yep. Um the other stuff, you know, I just, I can find flyers in other, other, um, asset classes that I like, if you would. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. What else you got? Anything else? Um, I can pull up anything you want. Is there anything you want to talk about? Um, not really. I, um, uh, yes, I could talk your ear off, but I would say that I just want to make sure that you gave us a lot of here. Um, like give me some feedback. What I love is the simplicity, if you would, and you're really giving some great indicators with the, I want to make sure I say it right, the confluence. Yep. And that is just basically analysis or just everything pressed into a number, all of the indicators pressed yep. into a number. Um, so I find that very, very hopeful. Um, and I'm quite the fan. So um, how do uh, how do people find you, Kevin? Yeah, um, we're on Twitter or what X is. Uh, if you go stock TA dot and dot com, uh, we don't have many followers on there. The previous owner wasn't active, but I try to tweet out charts every day. I just 
things I find interesting, um, stocks I'm in, stocks I'm looking at, um, you know, feel free to visit our website. We're, we're totally free right now. Um, we do license our API to some institutional clients, but I'm really trying to keep this free for the average person right now. Cause I think, I think a lot of people could use some help. And I think this would be a great tool for people to have in their toolbox, whether they're trading options or just regular trading, like I'm doing, um, you know, I know some, some of my friends use this to go long and short, um, with a three month old, I haven't shorted anything right now because there's just too much <laughs> right. risk with it. Um, yeah, it's too much but, risk. Been. But I think it's, um, you know, I think the site has a lot of utility and, you know, I hope people like it and we'll check it out and give us a chance. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I love that you're doing this for the, uh, the people like myself. So uh, I really want to thank you. To all of the listeners, yeah. I will put everything in the sh show notes and Kevin can be found at uh, stockta.com and get, again, what is your tw Twitter handle? Uh, yep, it's, it's stockta.com and we spell out dot D-O-T. Um, and then at the bottom of the site, um, if you click here, you can contact us and we got any, it goes right to my email and, you know, we check our emails every day and try to respond to people as quickly as I can. Yeah, you're very responsive. Kevin, I want to thank you so much. Um, I'm a big fan. I'd love to have you on again uh, here uh, soon. Yeah, it'd be great. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. See ya.